this little stinker was stuck on its back on the counter. And so I took this roll of chartreuse tape and I put it around it. And the process it went through was, oh no, I'm on my back and now I'm trapped. So it flipped over because it was like, well, I got to take this seriously. <laughs> and then it saw that it was trapped in these walls. And it was like, well, I got to get up these walls. And so it got up the walls. And ever since, for the last like half an hour, it's just been just been going in circles. Just going in circles. Because life is a circle. This little stinker. This little stinker. I don't know if you can see him. It, her, she, it. See that little stinker? Escaped from the tape. It was walking in circles on the tape, like I said. I tipped the tape over so it could reach the ground. And I was like, oh, hey, there's the ground. And it immediately walked over here to the faucet and look at itself in the mirror. Think about changes and stuff. I'm reading into it, but I'm just also trying to, you know, let you know what I do, what we do, us. I think you are really going to enjoy this individual. I enjoy him every time I see him. Welcome to the stage. My favorite, favorite man named Joel Elliott. No. already there are so many candidates and there's one that is standing out from the group I think you know who I'm talking about do you know oh, no. yeah is it mr. Trump right yeah he's the one he's the standout yeah okay and never see everybody nobody's on board uh, and what I'm saying no it's time to get on the Trump bandwagon and I'm, I'm talking to you stand-up comedians and I'm talking to you fans of comedy 
because do you remember when Bush was in office? Yeah, okay, sure, we killed a bunch of people and things were terrible, but it was the funniest time in America. SNL was having a great, uh, the whole, I mean, I got so many cast members, there were so many impressions, it just, it's good for comedy when the world goes to shit, is what I'm saying. It's good for comedy, because people are desperate and scared, and, and so they turn to, you know, the profession that gives them comfort. And then when they're done with the prostitute, they come to our shows, and they give us money. So vote Trump. Why are you guys all like, oh no, I know, we can't let Trump get into all this. Are you serious? You do comedy on a regular basis. How can you not support Trump? I told you I'm an activist. I don't know if you call it on Facebook. If you're Facebook friends with me, the other day I had like a counter protest. Uh, we, I was I was driving by, like we, I was driving with my girlfriend. We saw this like abortion protest, you know, like it was across from the women's center and they were all like, you know, like, pray for the fetuses, and they had pictures of the fetuses. And it's and the women's center is really close to a school, so they were like, you know, like, murdered fetuses, so like, kids, don't, you know, this could have been you, but your parents made the right choice, whatever. You know, like, they're just, just harassing people all day, and I'm driving by with my girlfriend, and she's like, oh, look at those people, and I was like, you know what I like to do with those people? And she's like, what? I was like, stand next to them with a sign that says, pray in your closet, Matthew 6-6. You know, because I like to teach, I like to like scold them out of their own book. It's it's fun. I grew up with fundamentalists, uh, but you know, God says, pray in your closet, not out on the street with pictures of fetuses. I just, I don't know. I just I'm picturing Jesus standing next to these people and, and being like, are you? You know, they're like, yeah, we're doing the Lord's work. It just it's not right. Okay, so I did. So we did this. I stood next to them, and uh, they were they were happy. You know, like, I wrote a Bible verse down and everything. I thought that they would, you know, they were like, you can't stand here. And I was like, well, where can I stand? They were like, no, we, we have this spot. I was like, well, okay, till where? It was like, all day. I'm like, okay, like, like distance, like distance-wise. Like, you know, at what point am I within my legal rights to stare at you with bitter with bitterness? You know, uh, and so, you know, then the policeman, there was a policeman on site, you know, and he, was, he called me over, and I was like, oh, God, here we go. And, uh, and he was like, hey, man, I'm stuck, you know, like, you just can't stand over here. I mean, no, that's pretty fun. No, it is fun. <laughs> But you can't stand over here, you gotta go across the street. So I started to cross the street and the protesters are like, He's jaywalking! He's jaywalking! And the police group's like, oh, yeah, and can you go down and use the crosswalk? I'm sorry. Uh, so he said, this is what happens when my boss makes me a telecommuter. I have, like, nothing to do with my time. And so I'm standing next to protesters with signs because I just, I really, I don't know what to do. I, I should probably just, I should probably start start arming myself for the war. You guys know we're going to war? I don't mean ISIS, I mean Christmas. Did you guys? It's, I don't know, I just keep hearing about it. There's a war on Christmas happening or something. And I, like, I think it has something to do with the fact that like most of the consumer goods on the shelves are not emblazoned with the, with the face of the baby Jesus. It, isn't that it? Or, I, like, I think that's what... That's what the American Family Association wants, right? If, to get on their nice list, you have to like put the baby Jesus on your product. Otherwise, you're just not supporting Christmas enough. I don't know. Baby Jesus, gummy bears. I'm hungry. Uh, wow. Uh, you know, I don't really know what happened tonight. I think it might have been stand-up comedy. I don't have any shows coming up, but come out to see me. I'll be getting drunk in bars and doing open mics. Uh, what, Copper Top? We do one there, and, and that'll be fun. <laughs> it's just so creepy at Maggie Myers. It's like, it's like Village of the Damned compared to the Copper Top. None of them listen to the Copper Top. And then I come to Maggie's, and you're all looking at me, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Maggie Myers, you have been great. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me something? Yeah, your time's up. <laughs> You've been great. I, on the other hand, have been Joel Elliott. <laughs> Joel Elliott, everybody, give it up for Joel Elliott. <laughs> I, uh, I talked about a lot about how I was a time traveler, you know, and that's because I just focus a lot on patterns. I've been publishing my life for five years, and I've noticed I go in the same patterns and circles over and over. And it's actually 
not wrong. It's not a problem. It's life. Tried to make her go to rehab, but I said no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, you will know, know, know. I ain't got the time to let my nanny think so fine. Just tried to make me go to rehab, but I wouldn't go. Cause there's nothing, it's nothing you can teach me. I can't learn from Mr. Halfway. Did give a lot of trouble, but I know you don't come in the shot glass. Tried to make me go to rehab and I said, no, no, no. Yes, I've been black when I come back. No, 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 no. I ain't got the time. My daddy thinks I'm fine. Tried to make me go to rehab, but I wouldn't go, go, go. Tried to make me go to rehab, but I wouldn't go, go, go. Tried to make me go to rehab, I said, no, no, no. He's a funny man. Eh, not really. I'm just a man. I'm a person. I'm a human. Mostly. Uh, I'm more human than human. That's the problem. We're going to check back in with my familiar. Uh, this room's clean. I'm not criticizing anything. But that stink bug right now. That one and I are like connected in that weird nature one this way. And it is still looking in the mirror. We'll check in with it, see if it's still introspective, maybe get it to continue its path, because we don't want it to freeze. Yeah, I'm going to get away. 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 I'm going to get away
<laughs> so, we've come to, I guess, the end of episode two, let's just say that. And uh, one of the rituals, you know, when I'm clearing the stress of the day or whatever, the frustration, the rust that's in my head, the frustration that people put into me, uh, showering, that's just a simple ritual. If people are stressing me out a lot, you know, I'll shower like five times a day because whatever it takes, you know, you just got to clear it. And so this is ritual that I and many call ablutions. Okay, now we're going to see if we get some music.